Hello and welcome back to this tutorial on profiling with the Intervitone Profiler. My name is Martin Ernst and I work at the Pleiades Computing Facility at the University of Wuppertal. In a previous tutorial we have learned how to profile an application with Intervitune. Before we continue with Vtune itself, it does make sense to discuss a couple of common concepts of CPU architectures. This is useful since many metrics and results of Vtune's profiles are often expressed in these terms. The intention is to provide a broad overview of concepts and terms, but not to go into the details too much. If you do care about the details, the Intel Optimization Reference Manual is a very substantial resource to learn how the architecture and program execution performance are connected. Let's start with a possibly incomplete list of important concepts. The front end of a single CPU core manages instruction decoding and branch predictions. In the back end, the core is executing its functions loading data from caches through ports and more. CPUs have a notion of in-order and out-of-order execution of instructions. Where certain parts of the CPU stay true to the exact order of operations in the code, while others can operate out of order to maximize the utilization of available resources. Retired instructions are mentioned a lot. This refers to all instructions that actually contribute to the final result of a program. CPUs can execute multiple threads, sometimes even on a single core with shared resources between the threads. Another level of parallelization within a single core is achieved through vectorized instructions. Single instruction, multiple data, short SIMD, is often mentioned here and describes the process of applying a single instruction to multiple data objects simultaneously in one step. This list is of course incomplete if we consider the whole CPU architecture, but the concepts in this list often occur in VTUM profile results. In this simplified block diagram of a single core, you can see how these elements interact with each other. The data is passed through a hierarchy from the disk through memory to shared level 3 and 2 caches until instructions are stored in the level 1 instruction cache in the front end and data in the level 1 cache in the back end. The front end is responsible for translating program instructions into something the CPU can execute. This is why instructions are cached here. Program instructions are decoded into micro operations and the front end tries to predict which branches are likely to be executed in the future to preload the corresponding operations efficiently. The front end follows the program order so this section of the core is executing code in order. The back end picks up micro operations and maps all operations to available resources. It is executing operations on data stored in the level 1 cache. The code execution is performed by the execution engine and it can work out of order to optimize the utilization of available resources. Data is loaded and coprocessors, for example for vectorized operations, are accessed via ports. Keep in mind that these low-level resources are commonly underutilized by software, so understanding how much a given application is utilizing these resources can play an important role during optimization. Pipelining instructions in the front end and out-of-order execution in the back-end introduces some level of implicit parallelism. These are two examples why a modern CPU core can execute more than one operation per clock cycle. Speculative execution is trying to maximize the processor operation even further. In case of a misprediction, if the wrong branch is taken, the CPU has to steer to the new branch and is not utilized efficiently. In the end, all we care about are all good instructions, also called retired instructions. Retired instructions are the ones that really contribute to the final result. Each metric in a VTune profile is affected by its very own class of problems. They are affected by very different CPU features and may depend on specific code and compilers. So we have to consider very different approaches to resolve an observed inefficiency in a given program. To give some examples, if you observe frequent branch steers, you can try to improve the branch predictability by simplifying conditions and if statements. It can also help to focus on the most probable path. If you see many data cache misses, you could try to improve the cache alignment by matching container sizes to the current platform and reordering the way they are stored and accessed. In a third example, if you observe a poor utilization of CPU capabilities, you could look into ways of introducing better multi-threading, vectorization, or making use of available specialized instructions. 
The Performance Monitoring Unit is a special hardware component that counts hardware events. This is the part that Linux Perf or the VTune Sampling Driver is accessing to evaluate the CPU performance in greater detail. It is mostly counting occurrences of certain operations or conditions. For example, how many instructions have been retired in a certain time interval? How often did we have to re-steer and flush the pipeline because of branch mispredictions? How many cycles did the core spend in unhalted mode? Or how often do we miss the data in our last level cache? Last level refers to the level 1 cache, which is at the end of the data hierarchy. These are just some examples and we could list many more. There is a useful collection and description of all metrics in the VTune documentation. Do not hesitate to make use of the reference manuals and documentation if your measurement highlights a specific problem. To summarize, VTune profiles are often expressed in concepts of the underlying CPU architecture. The idea is that you should have a rough understanding of the interplay between CPU architecture components and how they connect to the actual code. A really deep understanding of the architecture on the other hand is typically more relevant when developing specialized algorithms for libraries or developing compilers. So my personal recommendation would be to focus on a superficial understanding of CPU architectures first and only go back to the reference material and read up on the details whenever you hit a real problem in your application. This way you can develop a better understanding about CPU architectures over time without getting distracted by the large amount of reference material.